Hello, you're watching this video right now. That means you must have watched Beyblade. Well, hello guys, how's it going now? I must say. <clears throat> Today I'm back with another Beyblade video. Well, the last one's got pretty less views, so well, hope this one's gonna hit the mark. <clears throat> Sorry. So the topic is top 10 most powerful Beyblade villains. It's been a long time since uh, I made a diversity, I mean, uh, what do you say, I mean, a Beyblade video that contains all kinds of characters from all sorts of Beyblade series, <clears throat> that expands from the original series, the original Beyblade series, V-Force, G-Revolution, Metal Fusion, Metal Masters, Metal Fury, Shogun Steel, Beyblade Burst, all of them. So then. The title is obvious, the most powerful Beyblade villains. Well, let's begin with the disclaimer. So the disclaimer is, I'm just, uh, this list just consists of the people who have been everlastingly stood as a villain or have been, uh, like turned into one from being a good person. But it does not consist of people who have been uh, acting as a villain for a certainly short period. Example, Mr. Iker Akabani and uh, Subasa Otomi, the dark version of him, have been excluded from this video as they have been playing part as one of the main protagonists of the series. Well then, let's get started. Number 10, Master Pluto. This dude was one of the most powerful big leaders. Well, at least he was one of the most annoying big leaders. He was on the side of Nemesis or Dark Nebula or whatever. He had this uh, Rago guy and uh, Mr. the Doji with him. Well, he was one of the main characters of the Nemesis revival arc and uh, yeah, he was one of the main objectives. He had a uh, Used himself with Nemesis and had uh, taken a form such as this one. Well, he was on part with Rago while he acquired this transformation. And yeah, he although he wasn't a legendary blader, he sure uh, went on par with Kenta and his flame, I mean, uh, Flash, such a And yeah, his Beyblade is Fire Fuse Dark Helm. It's a really powerful one. Well, uh, yeah, at least it was. And uh, yeah, that's it. Number 9, we have Dark Ryuga. Hey, hey, chill, chill, chill. Don't leave the video. Just hang on, just hang on. I'm gonna explain why I put Ryuga in this list. Well, 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 you must be thinking, what the hell is wrong with this guy? How did he put Ryuga in this list? He was one of the legends who fought for the sake of the world. Well, 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 chill now. I'm not gonna just, you know, I wouldn't have just put Ryuga. He's my favorite leader. And if I put him in the villain list, there must be a reason. And yeah. I'm sure most of you must have got it. It's Dark Ryuga. He had the Lightning El Drago. Basically, he was actually a Dark Blader. He started off being one of the main sadistic villains of uh, Metal Fusion. And yeah, he had stolen the Forbidden Bay El Drago. And uh, Ryo Hagane tried to stop him and failed. And yeah, his main, uh, he, I mean, his main uh, goal was to, you know, snatch all the base spirit from every single blader there was and then become the strongest of them all. Well, he tried to do that, but then again, uh, he acquired a really strong dark form which could not be easily beaten, which was this one, yeah. And also, yeah, well, the only person who could have defeated him was Jinga Hagane. He was infused with these dragon-like things and yeah, he became totally overpowered. Well, Lightning Eldrago was definitely a dark blade, I mean, dark blade at that moment. Well, uh, he had this dark power plunging through his body and uh, he tried to, you know, uh, destroy all the bees and become the strongest. Well, 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 and then we have number 8 in our list. Who is? Arthur Peregrine. Well, Arthur is a, a character who appeared in the Beyblade Burst Rise, and uh, yeah, he may, he gathered a team called Inferno. He wanted to take over the whole Beyblade world and you know do all that, well, all that statistic things, and uh, you know he wanted to 
just improve his Beyblade the Prime Apocalypse and to do that he would do just anything to fulfill his ambition. Well he was definitely ambiguous that's uh, obvious and he caused quite a lot of trouble unless the team of Dante and Delta together with all their friends could actually take down this guy and his whole team inferno. And then we have number 7 who is 5. This guy is yet another sadistic blader. Huh. So he uh, was basically the twin brother of Hyde. Well, he's not in this list. So particularly, he was one of the main, I mean, the most sadistic blader in the whole history. I could make that clear based on my personal opinion. Well, Fi had a uh, Dread Phoenix as his bay, and he actually caused the quite a lot of trouble to the Beyblade world. He had, you know, gone on a rampage, I mean, a dark rampage to break all the bays and, you know, he bursted quite some of them. And his main agenda was to, like, uh, you know, destroy all his competition and stand as the number one. And, yeah, he was really sadistic on that matter of fact. And number six, Red Eye. Shu Kuranai or Red Eye was actually one of the main villains in Beyblade uh, Burst uh, Turbo. He was uh, he was definitely a sadistic blader and uh, he had this evil ambitions and uh, he had one a mask which was which was definitely an evil purpose I mean which was definitely for an evil purpose. Well, although he ha he was uh, transformed into Red Eye, he had a uh, gun, uh, came back his consciousness, and yeah, he used Sprison all over his transformation. And uh, at that matter of fact, the only person like there were quite a few of them who could actually take Red Eye down, and he was a really really powerful person. Although Shukur and I initially was never a villain, but Red Eye for just few purposes he became a villain. Okay, well then let's get into the top 5. And in the number 5 position we have Mr. Kira Hayama who is the farmer blader of uh, Bahamut. Okay, this guy was the main antagonist of Shogun Steel and uh, yeah he was actually working for the DNA Dark Nebula again. And uh, he was, I mean, his main objective was to, you know, like, take over the whole world with the help of Doji, who had been acting as some kind of a computer virus or something. I don't know the name, and I literally forgot it. Okay, so this guy was uh, very, very powerful, cruel, heartless, ruthless, and, yeah, obviously, sadistic, too. All of them were basically sadists or something. Well, Kira Hayama uh, actually, I mean, with his Bahamut was actually a very powerful antagonist. He was uh, rivaling uh, Zakyo and uh, Zairo Kurogane. And well, he had actually defeated m m most of them. He inflicted a lot of harm to people and gained pleasure in that. And yeah, he was one of the main antagonists. And yeah, in the latter series, he was turned uh, good again. I mean, he was never good, but he actually turned good with the help of Zairo Korogane, who wiped the floor with this guy. And number 4, this dude is definitely interesting, Damien Hart. Okay, Damien Hart was one of, I mean, the leader of Team Star Breakers who represented the United States of America. Well, Damien Hart was a really, really arrogant and, uh... Cruel Beyblader. So his main objective was to, you know, destroy all the competition he had, being a Star Breaker member, and yeah, his Beyblade was the god dog of Hades. Whose was uh, the Hades Kerbix. So his special move was quite fantastic. How pulled chains out of nowhere and uh, yeah, snatched the Beyblade into some kind of a fantastical world. And yeah, he did a lot to, you know, destroy people. Well, he had a thought and mindset of fighting Ryuga, but he went away fighting uh, Jack. So, uh, yeah, he was definitely one of the main worthy people who could come into this list. And yeah, sure, Damien Hart was definitely a big, a big. 
a big pain in the neck for uh, the Bang Bang Belux uh, g Galaxy team. I'm sorry, I didn't pronounce that wrong. Okay, and then we have number three. Who is Lane Valhalla? Many people are fans of this guy for some reason. Well, not gonna lie, when my, me myself, I'm one of the fans for this guy. In Beyblade vs Sparkling, he was also one of the legendary villains. He had a lot of arrogance and a lot of cruelty uh, within his heart. And yeah, he was one of the student of uh, Shu Kurenai, and then later he became even stronger than him. And wanted to, you know, destroy all these opponents and become one of the main strongest, uh, you know, one of the main and the strongest uh, bladers in the Beyblade Burst. And, uh, yeah, his Beyblade is Variant Lucifer, which is quite powerful. He was one of the main, I mean, one of the strongest bladers in the Beyblade Burst history. Well, yeah, even in the main Beyblade history. Well, and his power was definitely unrivaled, and he was actually a very dark blader. And number two, we have Mr. Brooklyn. Spiders ahead, guys. Well, Brooklyn is definitely, if you like, take another look at his angle, he is actually a very good guy. He's pleasant, calm, he's always outdoors, he wants to pet butterflies or something, and yeah. Well, he definitely avoids trying to fight, and he really even did that, like once or twice hardly. And then, uh, well, uh, yeah. And then actually, when he thinks that he's gonna lose, he's gonna let out that inner emotions that remain stood in his heart. And then, he becomes a really, really dark blader like this. He is Beyblade is Zeus, also known as the King of Darkness, and that's actually a special move. It doesn't make sense, I know. But still, uh, Brooklyn was actually a very cruel blader, and he was cold for one thing, and uh, Zeus was actually a very, very powerful blader. Indeed, he was like the third strongest blader who in the whole of the original series, or let's say G Revolution. And yeah. He actually became such a big uh, hurdle for Tyson and Kai. Although he was defeated by both of them, he became a really great match for them, equivalently. And yeah, he was actually quite dark after the number one person who would be... Well, you all know who it is. Rago. Do I have to explain about this guy? Well, let's just do it for the sake of formalities. Rago. Initially... He actually was the son of the black, I mean, the child of the black son. His main goal was to revive the nemesis, and which he actually did. And uh, all of them, Jinga, Hagani, Kyoya, all the season bladers and all the uh, planet bladers, all of them, I mean, the solar system bladers, all of them tried their best to defeat this guy. Well, none of them could, except for the part in which they all gave his power to Jinga to, uh, you know, help him beat this guy. Well, definitely, Nemesis, uh, yeah, Diablo Nemesis, the evolved version of the normal Nemesis, was one of the, I mean, let's say the strongest Beyblade. Originally, it was the strongest Beyblade in the whole of the Metal series, and uh, yeah, but some people say he did a lot of cheating and used other people's uh, base spirit to beat Ryuga. Well, uh, Rago was actually the owner of uh, the Nemesis and he wanted to revive the Black Sun. And yeah, he did uh, quite a lot of things with Dablo Nemesis, destroyed many bladers. And yeah, well. And then he finally, uh, you know, after a big rampage, he finally became like this. Some kind of a devilic monster. And uh, this diabolic creature was actually none other than Raggle. I mean, I already know. So he was basically the guy behind all of this. And yeah, with the help of Doji, he just basically used Doji or something. And uh, yeah, he used a uh, dark power within Nemesis to revive Nemesis until he was stopped by Jinga Hagani. Well then guys, that was the list for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if I did miss any of the most like villains in the Beyblade series, 
please mention down in the comments and yeah thank you have a nice day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you're a fan of uh, cool shots or you play minecraft then don't forget to uh, subscribe to my friend's channel whose link is in the description below thank you have a nice day